So Duchenne muscular dystrophy is a rare disease where there have been a number of clinical trials and indeed even approved drugs, but very few clinical trials have met their primary endpoints. So the problems that we've had in Duchenne are very common across rare diseases where there are beginning to be treatments and, therap and therapies in development, but we don't have the best clinical endpoints. We don't have a clear understanding of disease progression, which makes it very hard to test whether a drug will work, particularly if it's not a profound effect, a cure, if, if you like. So what we've done with the Duchenne Regulatory Science Consortium is aggregate 14 different data sets into a single data set to develop a very large database of clinical data across the disease spectrum from quite young boys to quite old boys. And we're building a series of disease progression models to understand Duchenne disease progression across the whole continuum of disease. And that's going to, when that's complete, which is on its way, we'll have a much better understanding of how to simulate a clinical trial, figure out what the best inclusion criteria are, the best endpoint, what, how long the trial needs to go, so that we can potentially develop trial protocols that really tell us whether a drug works or not. And to me, this is profoundly impactful, because you don't want a clinical trial where the answer is, well, maybe. You want to try a clinical trial where the answer is definitively yes, preferably, but if not yes, then definitively no, let's move on to the next one. This is so common across rare diseases that I've worked on, and all rare diseases, and isn't it great to have the opportunity to help not just one rare disease, but all of them, and the cross-learnings between diseases to help the ones that are so, so rare there just aren't that many patients. This is really important to me, and I think really important to the community, and something I think is really important to do. So today has been an amazing day, and the launch of any big project is always amazing. A project this big and this ambitious is exciting. To hear from the patient advocates of what they have done in their individual diseases and how data has helped them, in some cases, get two treatments for their disease, and to think how we can do that for all those other diseases out there. So the figure came out earlier that only 5% of rare diseases have even had treatment out there. To think the impact this project can have on all those other disease communities. I've had wonderful conversations with industry about what they would do if they had access to this kind of data and analytics. Lots of conversations about what kind of analytics are going to be important to, to industry and to patients and how do we incorporate the patient voice in, the, uh, in these platforms. There is so much work to be done. It's so exciting. I, I was going to say we're, we're going to get going on this tomorrow, and might be tonight. I may start working on this tonight, but this is, it's been an amazing day, and it's really exciting to move forwards with this project. The primary next step is really going to be bringing the community together. I see my next year spending a lot of time talking to the patient community, talking to the advocacy groups, talking to industry about sharing data, helping them to understand why it's important to share data. As we've found in Duchenne and Friedrichs, it takes a while for people to understand that this is a reasonable thing to do and the value of doing it. So we're going to spend a lot of time talking about data sharing, getting the first data in, talking to industry about what analytics are most valuable to them, and talking to disease communities about their data. I'm not an expert in 7,000 diseases. Trust me, nobody, nobody is. If anyone out there says they know all 7,000, they're lying. We need to be working with the community. As I said at the end of our panel, this is a community program. We need everybody involved. We need the patients. We need the advocacy groups. We need the clinicians. We need the academics. We need industry, and we need the regulators. So that's really where I see the next year being, is a lot of discussions, first looks at data, first looks at what the analytics would be like. We're ready to go. This is going to be exciting.